Assalamualaikum. My name is Dr. Kayonda Yubet Ngamaba. I'm a researcher fellow at the University of York. I'm based at the International Center for Mental Health Social Research, which is part of a social policy and social work department at the University of York. Today I'm going to talk about the routine participation in sport and fitness activities among outpatients with psychotic disorder. This is a multi-site cross-sectional survey conducted in England. So if you look, you will see is where I'm based here, International Center for Mental Health Social Research, and here we're going to look at the different activities um, among people um, with psychotic disorder. Support and fitness activities among psychotic patients are so important because that can help them to improve their quality of life. But unfortunately, people with mental health condition, mental health problems, are less likely to be involved in social ac connections, in social activities. And most of them, because they are not involved in uh, physical or mental or social activities, they, that affect their quality of life. So, and there is less research, uh, cross-sectional research in England, looking at this particular group of people with a psychotic uh, a disorder. That's why we're going to look at this uh, particular group to see how their support and their uh, uh, social activities, their fitness activities. Before to get there, we need to look at how mental health support work in England. Most of the time when people who need support, they go to see their GP. GP is general practitioner. This is the first contact where they will go for advice or for a treatment. And if the treatment's not working because they got severe mental health condition, they may find themselves in a hospital. Some people will go in hospital because they won't. Some people will be sectioned. So that means they will be forced to go to the hospital. And they will get support, that they will get a, a treatment. And as soon as they are discharged from the hospital, they can be uh, connected with the crisis team. That crisis team, crisis intervention can help them for the home treatment, they can come to support the person. And as soon as they are discharged from the hospital, even before they, uh, they will be discharged from the hospital, the community mental health team will be involved, will be contacted. And when we talk about community mental health team, it's a <clears throat> big group of many people. We got a social work, we got a, a community psychiatrist nurse, we got a occupational therapist, we got mental health professional, we got psychologists, we got support worker. All those people, they're working together around what we call care coordination, is to look after people who got mental health but who are outpatient who are in a community. So there is some people who can't cope with their everyday task. For example, transport, the appointment, taking the medication, then they will get the social care or community care. So that can help them to attend the appointment and to get supported. And there's people who struggle actually to be at home. They can't be at the home because they're really vulnerable and they can't cope, then they will be in a residential care. Those kind of people could be in a hostel, could be in a residential care home, they could be in supporting housing scheme, they could be in a rehab, all kinds of people just because they can't cope to be in their home. That's the way the mental health support work in England. Let's go back now to our study. We're back to our study looking at the support and fitness activities uh, completed by people with psychotic disorder. 
we're looking at their daily life. So we're looking in the last seven days, people who've been involved in support and fitness activities. So our research was to look at that particular group of people and to see how the frequency, the intensity, the time they spend, and what type of support or fitness activities they go to. And we look at the World Health Organization recommendation, which is asking that people should have at least 150 minutes per week for uh, intensity physical activities. So that's why like, uh, the World Health Organization recommendation. So we look at that to see if people, they completed the activities and if they reach that 150 uh, minutes per week as a minimum. This uh, study, as I said at the beginning, multi site uh, uh, survey. So we use different sites to conduct this uh, study, but all people were under care coordination. So it depends the community mental health team. So we had 4,458 people who were assessed for eligibility, but you know when you assess you say people, they, those people may be involved, but only 1,719 uh, uh, people who were accepted to be approached and 612 people who consented and the final uh, uh, number of participants was 529 and if you can uh, in our uh, group people who accepted to take part to this uh, research we had more male than female so you see female were around 35 percent and the age was between 20 to 69 and most of people 68% uh, were uh, white so because we got different uh, ethnic group in England we got white we got black we got Asian we got all different uh, ethnic group but most of them were white 68% and most of them 75.7 were single so and the we got 47%, nearly 47% were living alone. So there is other people were living with parents, with families, other people were in a, a supported accommodation. But in this group, 73.8 were independent accommodation. And we look at people, the education, people were to uh, primary uh, education, secondary education, and further education. Here we got nearly 45% had the further education. But the majority of people, 71% were unemployed, 8% were born in the UK, and 89% received benefits. That means the state support, and 71% had the diagnosis of schizophrenia. So now looking at the quality of life, we look at Mansa Manchester uh, assessment quality of quality of life from one to seven, most of people score 4.5 and they had 2.9 social contact in the last seven days. What was our findings? Interesting. We find that more than 50%, so 52.2% of people accepted to take part in fitness activities in the preview week. And most of them, we see 59% prefer to do their support of fitness activities alone. And we had only 21%, sadly, who completed the minimum of 150 minutes of fitness activities in the preview week because that was a World Health Organization recommendation but only 21.5% of people completed that. So it's important to mention as well that there is a people who were not involved, they were, who did less in this, uh, in support of fitness activities and most of them were female, older, relationship, unemployed and who had few social contacts. 
So that is the founding of our study. So now looking at what kind of activities people were involved. Because we see we had a lot, if we look at the different activities, but what kind of activities? We notice sadly that 47.8% 40, of people didn't do any activities in the last seven days. That is a big number. And 35% did, did one activity. So they didn't do two, three, no, only one activity, 35%. And the majority of people like to do the walking. So that's why we got 65.6%. They prefer to do at least 30 minutes or more of the walking. And we got 21% who enjoy or who did the gym and we got 12% who went to pub game like snooker and we got 10.5% who like cycling. So we see that we had different kind of activities and and people prefer to the, the walking uh, among the activities uh, they were offered. So as a recommendation, we can see that it's important to continue promoting physical activities intervention among people with psychotic disorder. It's very important because we can see that they can they can do that. Actually, 52% participated in routine fitness activities in the preview week. What is really positive, and not uh, not only that, we saw that the were more involved in some activities not others and what is we can look more is in, to invest to look at people who are less likely to take part we mentioned about women we mentioned about people who are unemployed we mentioned uh, people who are not willing to take part in activities or who took part but were not really spending more hours, more minutes like the World Health Organization uh, was uh, asking people to do. So we need to look at the negative symptoms. We need to look at people who are disadvantaged, unemployment, unemployment and how they can be more involved to do uh, sport and fitness activities. All that is are people behavior but to get that momentum to get that attitude to get people to be involved in uh, uh, sport and fitness activities we need to look at the how, how capable they are most of people we saw 52 percent were able to do that that's what is positive and they got motivation some people were not motivated we look at the group and we need to investigate and to support that group no motivated and there is people who don't got that opportunity because people think mm, those people have got psychotic disorder they're not willing to do uh, any social or support or fitness activities they need to get that opportunity and we need to look even on um, uh, unemployment people who live alone or how we can push push them to do that kind of activities then people can move forward because that can affect their quality of life so thank you for your time if you got any question we are available and you can uh, be in touch with us and we can try to see how we can help you thank you for your time